a very warm welcome to this service and to Iona Abbey on the 40th anniversary of Church Action on Poverty. And we have folk from Church Action on Poverty as guests with us in the Abbey this week. And we have our congregation here, and we also have uh, lots of people on Zoom um, being part of this service. And so a very warm welcome to everybody. My name is Katrina, and I work here on behalf of the Iona community. And for those of us here in the Abbey, I'm obliged to say, if the fire alarm sounds, please make your way out of the big west door. And those of you who are on Zoom, you will be able to watch us. So over to John Dale, who is the Chair of Trustees of Church Action on Poverty. John. It is my pleasure to read to you a letter from Ruth Harvey, the leader of the Iona community. Dear John and Neil and all of the Iona Abbey and those online this week, I am deeply honored to be able to share in celebrating, albeit from a distance, the people and the achievements of 40 years of church action on poverty. What a remarkable group of people and set of achievements this is. You bring dignity, agency, and power to so many. Dignity in the form of sharing stories of poverty. Over these years, you have evoked and honored the resilience, ingenuity, and wisdom of those who live in poverty to reach beyond labels of our deep shared humanity. The power, consistency, and fierce, yet always compassionate message of your publications such as this new book, bring dignity to all these stories. Agency, through, for example, the Your Local Pantry scheme, developed along with Stockport Homes, feeding over 60,000 people while giving them agency over their own lives, along with dignity and hope. Power, by way of projects such as Speaking Truth to Power, and local self-reliant groups. I have been deeply influenced by members of the Iona community, many of whom are also involved with Church Action on Poverty, who taught me the mantra, nothing about us without us is for us. Through your decades of change and growth, now with many more employees and much more impact than you had when you started, you are a true force to be reckoned with the fact that we are still and increasingly having to overturn unjust structures in the United Kingdom is an outrage, a scandal indeed, which would appall us all. And yet as Christians, here we stand in the face of this scandal to pray for, to bear witness to, to take actions in favor of a world turned upside down where justice and peace hope and prosperity for all will prevail. And Neil, as director through these last decades, and at the risk of embarrassing you, might I share my deep respect and awe for you, your ability to remain quietly, fiercely constant, focused, informed and compassionate is remarkable as is your ability to lead a growing staff team and to gain the trust and the funding for long-term expansion and growth of Church Action on Poverty. May you and all those involved in CAP continue to draw strength from those of us who support you, who deeply admire the work that you do to bring more dignity, agency and power to so many people. And let us worship together. Please join me in the opening responses that can be found in the order of service or in the Iona worship book on page 165, 165. 
God above us, trees, birds, and sunshine, stars, and moonlight. Above us. God beneath huh? us, earth, rocks, and rivers, roots, and caverns. Uh -huh. God around us, trees, trees. Animals and people. God within us. Hope. And now please join in song, No One Will Ever Be the Same. Please stand to sing. Please join me in call to prayer. Move among us, God. Give us life. Let your people rejoice in you. Give us again the joy of your help. Give your spirit the freedom to save us. God, make our hearts clean. Restore us in body, mind, and spirit. And now we share the prayer offered by Jesus. Loving God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And now we will listen to some real life stories.
So at this point, um, if you look in your order of service, we were going to be having a story from Steph. Sadly, Steph's not been able to join us uh, on Iona for the week, but instead we have Sharon and Wayne. Uh, and I'm going to ask each of them uh, a number of questions and uh, we'll, we'll get to know a bit of their story. So um, Sharon, first, what's your connection with Church Action on Poverty? So I work for a charity in London and we host a number of food projects and one of them is the pantry and our connection with CAP is through your local pantry. We have two pantries and we have just recently opened a third in Southwark and it's a place where uh, people join up. It's a, it's a membership scheme and uh, members are able to choose items from the pantry for a fee which provides dignity and choice because it's not uh, food that's just handed to them but they're able to walk around the pantry and see what they'd like to, to buy essentially. So that's our connection with CAP and your local pantry. Okay. And Wayne, what's your connection? My connection is with Church Action and Poverty as being someone that has been unwaged and experienced homelessness. But at the same time, uh, I am back where I started some 20 years ago, uh, unwaged again. And I work with CAP because it's led by those that are unwaged and in poverty and exclusion. Thanks, Wayne. And you spoke at the first National Poverty Hearing 25 or so years ago. Yes, I did. And what was the phrase you used uh, in that? It was, uh, um, I've always said that poverty is a battle of invisibility, being blamed for society's uh, ills and loss of power. And uh, for me, the poverty uh, hearing, the first ever national poverty hearing in the United Kingdom actually pricked the consciousness of the nation and did move the nation. Thanks. So um, second question, we've been discussing this week the themes of dignity, agency and power. And um, Sharon and then Wayne, what's your reflection on those three themes? So on dignity, the, the themes that have, have come up are belonging, a sense of belonging, a sense of community, a sense of being listened to, Dignity is about being listened to and also being heard. Dignity is about value and respect. Dignity is also about welcome in its broadest sense. Dignity is where people feel included in decision making. They are a part of, it's not done to. Dignity is where people feel that there is choice and they're able to make choice. And that's part of agency too. Power is, is, is twofold. It's where people feel they don't have any power by the structures that are created around them. And what we've learned in our group is that to, to, to have power and to have that stripped away makes you feel so um, weak and invisible. And I think this week is about how can people have power? How can they have choice? How can they have agency? How can they stop being invisible? If we talk about agency uh, and dignity, um, I would say that agency is first of all being open on an equal platform of a shared willingness to trust each other and honesty and transparency. And secondly, the issue of uh, dignity and agency again flow into each other is again is having respect of human worth, regardless whether you're a king, a politician, unemployed, homeless, a prostitute, or anything else, you are still human beings, and it's about human worth. And power, power to me, there are many forms of power. Power flows all around us, but it's actually opening those doors of, to power, to believe that actually 
one is an individual, but also one is a community as well. And we are a fractured community, but we need to be a whole community. And only in the bringing those people together with those flows of power can we actually be at one with each other, rather than fearing each other and mistrusting each other. And although we're marking or celebrating 40 years um, since the foundation, um, we're also looking forward. So what would be briefly your hopes or aspirations uh, for the future? I went on the pilgrimage walk today and I was chatting with another pilgrim and they said it's about love. And I think the aspiration would be a society that's kind and compassionate, that loves each other. And maybe starting from that point, we can then work outwards. I would say that what we need is a healing process, a complete spiritual, physical, material healing process within the nation and also at the same time for those that have power, don't be afraid to let go of your power and give it to those that would like to actually share with you those, those forms of power. And for, for a society for tomorrow, I would suggest that actually poverty is not natural, it is created, it is created and it's a battle. And it's a battle that must be won. It must be dissolved forever. It can be. We have the money. We have the experience. We have the expertise. And all we need is the political will from everyone. Thank you, Sharon and Wayne. And let us respond in faith to this. Please join me in affirmation of faith, which can be found in order of service or in Iona worship book on page 106, 106. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God, who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place, into action, into vulnerability, into the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life, and to be used by the Spirit for God's new humanity of God. Amen. And now let us join in song glory and gratitude and grace. Let us sing. Please stand to sing if you are able.
Equity, Agency and Power. Please sit. I have a voice. I am hidden, small and dainty. Issues with health and motivation. My world is crumbling around me. My pain is hidden from all to see. I have a voice. Abused and berated, downcast, shunned by government and society, unloved and forgotten, I have a voice. I use my voice loud and clear, shout and scream for all to hear, more articulate, more knowledge and more motivation. I am here to help to use my voice, to speak up for those who can't, who are hidden like me, who feel that there is no hope. I have a voice by Penny Walters. And today, on the 5th of July, along with Iona community members around the world, we pray for Christian education and retreat centers in our own countries. And with Christians around the world, we pray for the countries of Malta, Italy, Vatican City, San Marino, France, Monaco, Spain, Portugal, and Andorra. God, in your mercy. And we pray for members of the family group of five, for Morag Balfour, Jim Birdley, Carol Morton, Alan Smart and Isabel Carr Smart, Robert Stewart, and Ian White. What with them today, O oh God? And on the fifth day, we also pray for associate members in Tayside and Perth. Jeanette Bain, Katie Barber, Elaine Cameron, Joan Craig, Helen Douglas, Marion Douglas, Robert Douglas, Sheila Fletcher, Timothy Fletcher, Ginny Graham, Jean Jaffrey, Henry MacDonald, Marion MacDonald, Dinah McAleese, Judy McDowell, Irene McGuggan, Robert Milne, Peggy Roberts, Isabel Sinclair, Alex Sloman, Vanessa Stark, Willie Strachan, Anne Watt, Rachel Weiss, David Winnett, Jenny Winnett, William White, and Jean Young. We join in with the prayer, the eye of the weaver. With the eye of the weaver, you have chosen us such different threads to be gathered into unity that the world might believe. So we will not serve your purpose unless we are open to each other, not care for each other unless we reflect your love, not dare to love like you unless we are glad to accept the cost and joy of discipleship. 
as friends and followers of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Loving God, we're gathered before you to give thanks for the work of Church Action on Poverty and past years, and to pray for the work to be done in the years ahead. We give grateful thanks for all the Church Action on Poverty has achieved for those living in poverty, and for all those who've worked for Church Action on Poverty over the past 40 years. We pray for all our current staff, rejoicing in their strength and various abilities. We give thanks and pray for the many churches and individuals who support the work of Church Action on Poverty by their prayers and financial contributions. Among our current work, we pray for those working behind the scenes and for those working with self-reliant groups, Speaking Truth to Power, Church on the Margins, and your local pantry. We pray for a clear vision for the work of Church Action on Poverty in the years ahead, the strength of will to carry out that work, and the necessary finance and staff to support that work. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Creator of all, Saviour of all, Spirit in all, one God in perfect community. Where there is apathy, where there is deceit, where there is hopelessness, where there is joy, where we hesitate to serve you, For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As this is uh, our 40th anniversary, um, I thought I'd say a few words. Um, and as well as it being 40 years of Church Action on Poverty, it's uh, for me a personal milestone of 25 years as coordinator and director. And uh, for me, it's been a privilege and an honor to have followed in the footsteps of many others. Uh, the founding visionaries who came up with the idea of Church Action on Poverty 40 years ago, um, some of whom are with us, many of whom are not. Uh, my two predecessors, John Battle and the late Paul Goggins, um, all the staff and volunteers and trustees and members and donors and activists who've been involved in Church Action on Poverty over those years, and those who we have lost in the struggle against poverty. Among them, Brian Wallace, one of the pilgrim pilgrimage against poverty workers who left this building in 1999 and walked 670 miles to Westminster. Adrian Smith, one of our trustees with personal experience of poverty from the West Midlands, who sadly died, was taken by the struggle against poverty. Kath Carter from 
Drive in Teesside, a tireless campaigner against debt, who again died tragically from poverty. Too many people die or their lives are cut short by the struggle against poverty. It's also been a privilege and an honor to work alongside countless people and communities in the struggle to bring about a real and lasting change. To be constantly amazed and inspired by the commitment of people who refuse to be defeated by the struggle, who persist for year after year, who keep hope alive, who keep the fight against poverty alive in their own communities and nationally. To be part of a movement that creates space for the voices, stories and aspiration of people with first-hand experience of poverty to be heard and taken seriously at local and national level, in the media and in the corridors of power in Westminster and beyond. It's been an honour and a privilege to see change happen. Frequently after years of struggle, the debt on our doorstep campaign launched in 1999 that led to the end of rip-off lending. More than 10 years later, the end of Bright House and Wonga and Provident Financial, big, powerful companies who preyed on people in poverty, who are now no more because of the tireless efforts of campaigners over many years. The introduction of the national minimum wage and now the living wage, which when we first campaigned for a minimum wage felt a long way off. The recognition of the importance of lived experience and listening to lived experience in the work of the growing number of poverty truth commissions across the UK. The End Hunger UK campaign that brought to national attention the disgrace of countless people having to rely on food banks or going hungry in what is still the sixth wealthiest nation on the planet. 40 years on, the need for church action on poverty has never been greater. The battle against poverty in the UK is far from won. The cost of living crisis, or for many a real and pressing emergency, risks sweeping millions more into poverty and countless into literal destitution. As Wayne said 25 years ago, the battle against invisibility, a lack of resources, exclusion, powerlessness, being blamed for society's problems is just as great now as when he first spoke those words at the first national poverty hearing. The task of church action on poverty is not yet done. We must redouble our efforts in the years ahead, seek more allies and partners along the way, and reconnect ourselves to the task of working with people and communities struggling against poverty to reclaim dignity, agency, and power together. Church Action on Poverty cannot achieve this on our own. As we seek to reclaim dignity, agency and power, our vision now is to build a movement with partners across the country. Last year, the Methodist Church partnered with us with their Church at the Margins programme. They are investing £7 million in local churches and local leaders in marginal and low-income communities and we look for other denominations to do the same. 
we partner with the Poverty Truth Network to grow the Poverty Truth Commission movement across the UK. We're partnering with Purple Shoots from South Wales to grow the small but emergent dynamic movement of self-reliant groups. And this week, we signed a partnership with the Cooperative to work with us to grow the number of local pantries with local churches and communities to open another 150 pantries over the next three years to become a powerful movement in its own right with over 100,000 member households bringing dignity, choice and hope and supporting people and communities to speak truth to power together. The journey may be long and hard, but it is never dull. The vision of a UK free from poverty is our ultimate goal. Together, we can achieve it. Together, we must reclaim dignity, agency and power for those that need it most in our country. Thank you.